Welcome to the Alpha Genix Podcast, where every week we talk to incredible guests from around the world of biohacking, well being, men's health, and more. Here's your host, co founder of Alpha Genix, Ross Tompkins. Well, I'm delighted to welcome today's guest, Dr. Mark Jinks. And you share a passion with me about health optimization and longevity. So welcome to the show. Hi, hi Ross. Thanks. Um, thanks for having me on. It's uh, it's great to, to meet you. Obviously, been sort of following yourself on, on LinkedIn for a while and seeing all the work that you're doing. And it's uh, it's great to get an opportunity to talk to you about. Yeah, but there's lots of things that we share in common and, and passions that we've got. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking to you, talking to you more. Excellent. Well, I think today we're going to be focusing on one particular area, aren't we, which is NAD which is a fascinating um, area of longevity. But I guess before we get on to that and, and NAD Plus at Home, the company that you're working with, who is Dr. Mark Jinks? How did you end up in this space? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's certainly an interesting kind of field to be in. And that's, you know, that's why I'm why I'm involved in it, because it is so sort of fascinating. It's, it's very innovative and, and progressive, you know, it's not the traditional you know, NHS kind of route. So I'm a in a nutshell, I'm a, I'm a GP by background, you know, NHS kind of trained. I went to sort of Birmingham Medical School, did my foundation training, progressed through training from there. Um, not to kind of you know, delay things too much, but you know, I, I started training in, in orthopedic surgery, thought that was the kind of avenue I wanted to go down. Decided to retrain in GP because it's you know more preventative, you know, more holistic care, being able to do a bit more with the patients. I mean, the orthopedic surgeon is fantastic, but that wasn't the avenue that I wanted to go down. And, you know, currently I... I do work in a number of fields and, and longevity kind of brings all those together. So, you know, I work in, I do some like functional medicine, some, some work in sports, in, in rugby and hockey, triathlon, um, like a bit of, I guess, like regenerative medicine and then some aesthetics as well. And I, I kind of came across, I guess, NAD through intravenous nutrition therapy. So IV therapy. And this was back in like 2018, 2019, when I first started doing the training for it. And back then we were using sort of NADH, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about a, a bit later on. But and then we started moving into NAD plus. And I think, you know, I was I wanted to do a bit more, I guess, on, on that preventative side, you know, work with patients across a, a wide variety of fields and, and clients really across a wide variety of fields. And in my my kind of, I guess, passion interest is around you know, optimizing people's health, you know, taking people and taking people who are kind of, you know, doing okay, but, you know, they're, they're busy people, busy jobs, busy lives, and, and making them kind of feel great and just helping them perform at their best. And that's kind of where the sports work comes in. So I guess that, that's how I started doing this, um, started doing the IV drip, started doing the IV NAD, and then, you know, gradually moved into looking at, you know, other supplements as well. And then got in touch, well, the eight guys at NAD Plus at home got in touch with me, and that's how I started working with them because they've got this, you know, great product that makes NAD, you know, more accessible for people. Um, and, you know, that, that's kind of how I ended up kind of almost not, not kind of like sleepwalking into this by any means, but kind of like going from different specialty to different specialty, different areas and, and finding kind of what, what fits. And, you know, I, I think right now I'm, you know, finally in that area around kind of longevity that seems like it'd be a really good fit for me. And that, that's sort of me in a nutshell, really. I love it. Yeah. So it's kind of, you found your place in, in medicine yeah. sort of over time or it found you. Yeah. Um, I was, I was lucky enough to meet your founder um, earlier, John Gillen, who was telling me a lot about his journey and how he'd used NAD plus with addiction mm. and various other sort of areas with healthcare as well. But I guess for people who haven't heard about NAD plus, what what is it? Yeah. How, it's, where does it come from? How does it work? Yeah. So it's, it's a great question. Uh, so NAD plus NAD, it's it's nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It's, it's a bit of a mouthful, so we'll, we'll keep it at NAD. Um, you know, as as you, you know, super correctly said, you know, John's John's fantastic. And the original kind of uses for it were, were in IV therapy to help with uh, addiction, cravings, alcohol, drug use, but, but really high doses. So, you know, as much as, and I will talk about the doses again a bit later, but kind of like three grams, you know, five times in 10 days, five times in two weeks, you know, several hours through the infusions and they seem to get really great results but to go back and answer what it is it's it's one of the most abundant molecules in your body so it's in pretty much every cell aside from maybe red blood cells and it's it's a derivative of, of b3 so the vitamin b3 and i mean really it's 
the way I think about it is that it's essential for for life. Basically, I know that's really reductive, but that's that's how we look at it. So it's it's involved in critically involved in energy production. So like if you go back to biology days, which you know some people like, we'll go into a little bit of biochemistry today, but not too much because it can be a little bit dry. But it's involved in kind of ATP production. So ATP is like your body's main energy currency. That's that's kind of how your body uses energy, not just to you know go for a run or lift weights, but just to kind of just survive over sort of 300 different like cellular reactions rely on nad it's also important in upregulating a few key kind of proteins and enzymes related to preventing and repairing dna damage if if we look at nad see there's also a theory that it gets broken down into a, a really important neurotransmitter called adenosine which seems to have an effect on people's sleep quality their like mental clarity like cognitive functioning so i mean in a, in a nutshell it's a very natural kind of product that's in your body at the moment but because our levels do drop over time, we, we look at kind of supplementing it to help people, I guess, live better, to kind of live the way they want to, to be able to function as well as they want to do. Um, and yeah, you obviously had a, had a chat with John and we can talk about the different ways to take NAD, but that, that's how I sort of describe NAD in that kind of nutshell, really. Brilliant. Yeah, so it's like a, a precursor or a jump start for many, many processes within the body. Can you get it naturally? Does it occur in food? So there's no direct dietary source of NAD. So it's not it's not like I can say that you're gonna you know eat some bananas and it's got NAD in. But what you can I know that's really I, I like to kind of keep things very simple because that's the way that my mind sort of functions. Um, but there's there's definitely dietary sources that can help with NAD, and it's definitely something you can get naturally. So you know it's it's important that un, you know before we talk about supplementation, we we do always talk about lifestyle. As I think you know you do yourself with Alphagenics Ross and the TRT, you know. Um, I was I was thinking earlier. There's a lot of overlap with with NAD plus and TRT in that, you know, they're both you know fantastic, but but neither are kind of panaceas or, or magic ones. You know, if if you've got someone who's, you know, sat on their bum all day and you know has got dominoes on speed dial and it just you know, isn't isn't doing all the right things, then you give them these you know supplements, the TRT, the NAD. They're not going to do a massive amount. But if if you ask someone who's you know really busy, working really hard, and just wants to get get the most out of themselves, or in the case of TRT, you know they've got that decline, that measurable decline in testosterone, and you think they can benefit from it, then it then it works fantastically well. So apologies for the slight digression. You asked me about can you get it naturally? Um, so we spoke about, I guess, dietary sources. One of the key ways your body makes NAD, so it can make NAD directly, and that's that's usually in your liver, and it uses an amino acid called tryptophan. And that's found in a lot of animal products, essentially like meat, eggs, dairy. You can directly take tryptophan as a supplement as well if you wanted to, but you asked me about natural ways. Mm -hmm. um, your body also recycles NAD and there's a recycling pathway that, that goes on to make NAD. The ways to, to boost it naturally, and this is hopefully what we're trying to get people to do and they should be doing anyway, ideally, are things like exercise, um, periods of hormetic stress, and that's things like, um, like cold exposure, heat exposure, um, periods of kind of like caloric restriction, fasting. And if you've got the facilities to do this as well, like there's there's evidence that some like hypoxia training can help, but obviously that's quite sort of specialized. So you can, you can I guess, again, you can get it from dietary sources. And, and obviously the as a B3 derivative, it is helped by taking some B3 and that's in, in lots of other kind of foods. So there's dietary ways to kind of improve your NAD levels as well as those lifestyle measures. And, and that's what we... I guess before we talk about supplements, we should definitely be targeting those as well. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. NAD, TRT, you know, the, the variety of other supplements and, and treatments that are out there. Mm. It's important, as you say, to, to stress that they will not reverse a destructive life. Mm. Like you can't make poor lifestyle choices and then have NAD plus and TRT and suddenly be amazing. You know, as you say, if you're sitting on the sofa and eating pizza yeah <laughs> dominoes on speed dial yeah. <laughs> not going to be it's not going to outdo that yeah but if you combine those optimal lifestyle choices with things like this then it can take you to that whole other level yeah and it's great and i think that's one of the reasons that you know i enjoy kind of following following you ross is that you know you you've got this really big focus on on like lifestyle measures you know and improving people's you know quality of life in, in all sorts of ways right you know we're not just trying to you know push people for products you'll definitely see companies out there that, that do nad and trt that's just like this is a quick fix for you 
take this, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be Chris Hemsworth, you're going to be this fantastic super athlete, you know, and that, it, we, and we know that's not the case, you know, like it's made through the lifestyle measures. And I think that's, like I said, you know, it's one of the reasons why I think, you know, you know we get on well and I think like alpha genetics and, and like the NAD stuff should have quite a good overlap because we, you know, we focus on that, that lifestyle stuff first and then say actually, but also if you are struggling, this can be really beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, 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 so it breaks down into say, tryptophan. Which well, so, tryptophan so, so tryptophan is an amino acid. Sorry, Ross. I, I know that the problem is that as a GP background, if you sort of pull my jawstring and get me talking, I'll just keep talking. So I'll try and, um, I'll try and stop. <laughs> but with, with tryptophan, it's it's an essential amino acid, which means that we, we can't make it. So we have to take it from like dietary sources, which usually is kind of animal products. And that's kind of meat, you know, dairy, fish, eggs. Um, and we, we take that and our body uses that to make NAD plus and that that's kind of in the liver. So we, we make, we make NAD ourselves and, and we can recycle it as well. So those are the kind of two main ways that we kind of make NAD and, and over time, our body unfortunately becomes less adapt, less adept at making NAD. The, the recycling process becomes a bit less efficient. There's also there's also kind of like enzymes and proteins that, that use NAD as well. So that's things like like sirtuins, um, like CD38, which is an important like it's, it's an important kind of cell membrane kind of protein. They they use NAD, um, and these are the reasons why you know, NAD levels do do seem to drop with age. And you know, this is this is very much an evolving science. So we're I guess as a clinician, I try and always make sure we're doing the right things for patients. Always try and be well clients. You know, be safe. Obviously, that's paramount. But the reason I say it's involving science is that this is what we this is what we think we know at the moment. But you know, in, in five years' time, we could be saying something slightly different. This is the kind of like the up to date kind of knowledge that we're working with now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love, love that. I think that's the the definition of science, isn't it? You know, we should always be learning. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't ever say definitively we know this to be true, mm -hmm. uh, and it's never going to change because we're learning all the time. Um, is it measurable then you said it declines with age so is there a test you can do where you find out your baseline so it's there are testing companies it, this again quite repetitive it is an evolving science unfortunately so there's a company that um nad plus at home are, are working with it's called nad med nad med they're, they're a finnish company they seem they seem really good they seem to be from from my understanding the kind of the gold standard in testing there are companies that offer testing because nad is metabolized so quickly because it kind of is it exists in those two forms like nad plus nadh it, it is difficult to measure sometimes you know you, you'll see things online about like test samples having to be kind of frozen very quickly transported i i think this is this is a kind of changing space and there may be in the next 12 months that we have people doing you know regular testing taking supplements for kind of six weeks 12 weeks testing again at the moment, what I'm doing is, I guess, again, as a clinician, is trying to do the best for kind of people who come in to see me. If I think based on their symptoms, they're deficient, we talk about ways to kind of boost it naturally in supplements. I think the testing will become more, pop more, popular, more popular, more accessible, but it is, it is still a changing field. And, and right now, I don't routinely offer testing for people because we, we're still learning, I guess. Um, but you know, we know that we know that some people do benefit from the testing because there are people who do naturally have high levels who, who don't necessarily need supplementation. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's based, I guess, on the clinical picture. You know, we look at the results and look at the person. So I guess even if your levels were normal, you know, who, who defines what's normal in that normal range, but you were still quite symptomatic, you may still benefit from taking some supplements as well. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's probably the best I can summarize at the moment. Mm. It's, it's, it's exactly the same in the TRT world as well an arbitrary range or number that someone has created um seems like a strange way to address a patient when we're all different our body responds differently metabolizes things at different rates so our symptoms should be the thing that we listen to totally agree, totally agree um what are the benefits what, what do people see if they start on nad yeah it's a really good question so and I think without trying to be too vague, it, it really varies person to person. The the people I've seen who've benefited the most have been have been people who I I've used a couple of expressions. I, I use another expression where it's like, you know, you're burning the candle at both ends and, and also in the middle, right? So you're kind of person who's 
you know, you may be in your in your forties or fifties or, or even in your thirties or sixties. It doesn't really matter. But say you've got a super busy job, you've got maybe young kids, you've got older parents. There's a lot going on. We have people who come to see us. I guess like burnt out is kind of the way that we sometimes think about it, just completely flat. And um, I had a client recently. She's in her early fifties. You know, really really high achieving person. You know, super smart, busy job, but was you know previously super active and then was having now to take naps so she was napping on the weekend afternoons struggling to get through like you know, her job at work and you know, for her that was just you know crazy absolutely crazy and she took some nad for a period of a few weeks and didn't have to nap anymore and it was just like that was that was you know fantastic you know you know we're not we're not turning her into you know some super athlete but actually the the benefits she got was you know, energy levels helping with fatigue mental clarity these are the kind of the main most common things that we see there are i mean nad is an important cofactor for hormone synthesis so there is a suggested link that it can help optimize your body's own hormone production including testosterone but the main things we see and they can be quite subjective are things like brain fog improvement which is obviously a big one mental clarity in general energy levels and just kind of feeling better, feeling kind of more at peace, a bit more confident. Uh, back to, I guess, what you'd what you'd like to feel like when you were, say, a little bit younger. I and mean, that's a bit reductive, obviously. And there are older people who feel fantastic and, and good for them. But it's kind of just making them feel making them feel like good again. I guess that's what we that's what we're seeing mainly. Um, yeah. And we have in my in my previous work in my previous jobs and roles, we have used IV NED for people who've got alcohol problems, drug problems. But the most common things I see are are kind of people who just are a bit kind of low in energy, a bit burnt out, and and those are the main things we see. But again, there's there's that link with with hormone synthesis. There's suggested links with improving sort of liver function, helping with like cholesterol and or not cholesterol, sorry, but fatty acid metabolism, glucose regulation. So across the board, but th those kind of like more subjective ones are things that we we tend to notice first. I think with the the modern world we live in there's a really high percentage of people who would probably identify with that high stress yeah burnt out burning the candle both ends and in the middle <laughs> so sorry boss. I, love, I like doing the, the expressions <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that and i think a lot of people will, will resonate with that because we are all busy you know often both parents go out to work um because we need to because the cost of living is so high then we're coming back and juggling children and there's a lot on a lot of people's plates i think so i think if you said to everyone you know would you like to feel more energy uh have better mental clarity feel a little bit younger mm. i don't think there's many people out there that would say nah <laughs> not, not <for> me. <laughs> yeah. quite happy the way that i am feeling a little bit rubbish and a bit low and a bit burnt out you can keep yeah. your, you can keep your nad yeah. um so I think, yeah, I think that they're all fantastic, you know, fantastic benefits. Are there any, are there any drawbacks? Are there any side effects? Are there any downsides? So I'll, I'll answer that question in a second. I'll, I'll kind of preface it by talking a little bit about contraindications, so reasons why we might not use it. Yeah. And that and that does include, and again, repetitive, it, it is an evolving science, but that, that we'd always be really careful in people who've, who've got cancer, who've had a history of cancer or a really strong family history. If you are, if you are someone who's got a really strong family history of cancer, I would recommend that you speak to your, your physician about this or speak to your, the person who's maybe talking to you about this in general, assessing your risk on a case by case basis. And that's because in theory, and again, we're always trying to be safe in theory by upregulating cellular function, mitochondrial function with the NAD, cancers, unfortunately, very metabolically active kind of tissue or, or, you know, growth of kind of cells there's a theory that it could make that worse basically so that's that's something that we're always careful of also really careful in in pregnancy because you know it's not tested in, in pregnant women and that's that's the same for most things isn't it um drawbacks iv nad can be quite uncomfortable it can make you feel can make you feel quite heavy in your chest it can make your stomach feel a bit bloated quite uncomfortable again some people get headaches some people just feel not not quite right there's a number of theories as to why that happens i had someone say to me that it's because of the stress it puts on your mitochondria and that you're getting this 
mitochondrial fission where the old mitochondria are being kind of broken down and recycled and this mitochondrial fusion where new mitochondria are being made there's another theory that it's because of the adenosine that's released with with the nad when it gets broken down and actually interestingly adenosine is used medically to help people who've got heart arrhythmias and if you give it medically in a high dose it can give people what's called an impending sense of doom which is a fantastic thing to say to people isn't it um, and and that, that, that's exactly the words that we tell people. And that does quite align with if you give NAD intravenously very quickly, is that it can make you feel a bit ropey. Mm. And, that, and that lasts for as long as the NAD is running for, basically. As soon as the NAD stops, you, you're fine, you get on with the rest of your day. But I've, I've certainly experienced those feelings of being quite uncomfortable with, with taking IV NAD, especially when I've had it quite quickly. Um, there's We've had people ask us about... Um, diabetes and, and blood sugar control. So there's evidence and, and research which will suggest that NAD plus can help with glucose metabolism. There's other people who say that it can raise your blood sugars. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's kind of who do you believe, who do you trust? I think it's it's case by case basis. There are some people who take, so NAD plus at home is a subcutaneous injection of NAD. So that's into the superficial fat which unfortunately most of us have just under the skin we inject it and if you do that quite quickly that can be a little bit uncomfortable as well but the, the effects last only for a few seconds and actually the benefits you get from it you, you, i think for me far outweigh those kind of slight degrees of discomfort um, but apart from the things that we've mentioned it, it is a very very safe product as, as far as we're aware like I said, it's, it's one of the most abundant molecule substances in your body. Your body's got you know, huge amounts of it. We're just trying to help replenish those levels, help kind of re, you know, replenish that kind of recycling pathway, help you get the extracellular benefits of the NAD. Um, in terms of kind of side effects, th those are the main ones. And it's mainly intravenous from taking it too quickly. The, the side effects on the other, other routes are, are, are exceptionally minimal and it is generally very, very safe. I love the idea of, of sort of slowing down the the destruction of the cells, if you like, or mm. speed up the cellular repair, whichever way you think of it. Yeah, uh, that's quite a powerful way of thinking. I remember when I had the uh, IV uh, drip of NAD, I felt well, I thought I was going to be sick. Yeah, right? <laughs> feeling in my stomach, yeah. and the nurse turned it down, and it went away. Um, but, but I thought she said you might feel you might feel something. I was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit more than something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that sharp scratch with the with the needle, isn't it? Oh, it's a sharp scratch. Like, oh, hang on, hang on. That was quite sore actually. But um, yeah, if you there are people who can take it really quickly, right? And the, the fastest. So it depends on the dose you have as well. So the fastest I've I've had a, like a five hundred or a seven fifty mil bag, fifty milligram bag is is around an hour. Which is which is fairly good going. There are people who take it much faster than that, and and good for them. Like you know, all power to you. Some people take longer, right? And I think when we when they were using it in in addiction initially, it was three grams, and that would take sort of eight hours, and it would just take a huge amount of time. And that's, I guess, that's one of the, the drawbacks of the IV. I mean, I still use the IV NAD. We get people who use it regularly, and people do respond to it well. But it does take time, so you know, it can take two or three hours. It's not it's not the cheapest which is where the accessibility comes in mm -hmm. and actually some people they're not maybe as depleted as as people who do need the the iv and ad so maybe they don't use you know they're not you know big you know, drinkers of alcohol maybe they haven't got those those other issues that we, we spoke about earlier and actually microdosing in in taking kind of subcut injections you know more regularly or even oral supplements if people don't like needles can can be a really good alternative well that's that's a good Point mm. you there then. So what? So with the dosage, mm. one end you've got a high dose for addiction, and that's a cool uh, question. Totally different. Perhaps we'll come on to in a moment. How on earth does that work? That's fascinating. But then, what about the you know, the other doses in between? You mentioned microdosing. Yeah. You mentioned 100, 750. Yeah. What does all that mean? Like, yeah, no, it's a good, what, it's a good question. Yeah. Go for it. No, sorry, boss. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um. When we when we microdose, it really varies. So, the NAD plus at home injections, depending on how much you inject, that can be sort of fifty milligrams. It can be hundred milligrams. 
usually it's around sort of 50 milligrams uh, the oral supplements that you come across there's one that i've i've done some work in the past that's around 150 125 we're thinking that because it's a subcut injection we're getting better absorption into the bloodstream so maybe we don't need to be as high and those those smaller doses more regularly i'm sorry about this i guess in the same way that you might use if we look at trt you might use a smaller dose of say testosterone like cypionate versus say like a, a nibido injection which is you know a really big dose every 11 weeks for example mm -hmm. um the nad the IV NAD, we might use we do get some people who come in maybe three or four times a year you'll see protocols online where people have it once a month so actually taking you know a smaller dose like 50 milligrams every every other day so i think the protocol and the protocol is with nad plus at home it's every day for the first few days then it's every other day and you know that that lasts around kind of two or three months depending on how often you use it and that seems to give people a good benefit for people who are maybe just on that lower end that kind of slightly depleted but maybe don't have the other the other issues that we spoke about like the, the alcohol addiction the, the, the cravings the drug addiction those people are really kind of severe or, or you know degenerative diseases for example so there's there's studies and case reports around using nad for people who've got you know alzheimer's and you know parkinson's and other kind of neurodegenerative diseases and i'm not i'm not saying that these products are, are definitely going to help we're not advertising them as medical products but there are case reports where they've helped with kind of symptom relief and i think the jury is still a little bit out in terms of how exactly they work in terms of those conditions but they do seem to help and i guess it, it kind of goes back to that improving the mitochondrial function improving energy levels improving how the cells work improving maybe how the nerves are working but again that, that the kind of it's it's not and it's not exact science just yet i don't think Mm. I, I think I think with a lot of the longevity medicine and degenerative diseases, Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's, you mentioned things there. Mm. Obviously, as a doctor, you know you have the Hippocratic Oath. You cannot, you know, you don't do harm. Mm -hmm. But when you know there's no downside, why wouldn't somebody who yeah. has a, has a degenerative disease try it? It's like, well, it, I can't get I can't get worse. I could yeah. feel better so let's go for it i think you know i think that's how a lot of people would probably view it we've yeah I, I completely agree with you absolutely and we've had we've had people actually message really recently about uh, mnd motor neuron disease um mm -hmm. and i've had to be really upfront with them and say that and they were actually interestingly enough they were recommended by their neurologist which i thought was fascinating absolutely fascinating and, and, and great actually because exploring new treatment pathways so if you um i was you know i've i've, I've watched because i'm obviously super exciting i watch kind of nad plus videos on youtube and look at seminars and stuff like you know and you know in australia for example there one of the guys is talking about nad plus and he's associated with like you know sydney medical school and like sydney university and we're not quite seeing that in the uk you know we're not seeing like oxford cambridge you know ucl imperial or you know birmingham for example looking at NAD plus and talking about it as openly but to have like a neurologist recommend NAD infusions for someone with with MND I was like oh amazing god that's really that's really great and I had to be really honest with them and say that you know we can't promise anything you know this is a decision that you know this is the prices that we have to offer because of the time it takes and we have to buy the products in we hope we can help you and these are the other things that we can do to try and help but I can't promise it's going to make a massive difference and we're still waiting to, you know, we're still kind of planning it out whether this is the right thing for them. But, you know, it, it's an exciting kind of space to be in, you know, and if it if it does work for these degenerative conditions, then, you know, that's amazing. And, you know, fingers crossed, there's there's kind of hope to improve these people's symptoms, it, you know, if not their overall condition, but if we can just improve their quality of life, that, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah, 100%. And then, there's, you know, the medicines like rapamycin and, yeah. and things, which are gaining some traction and got some good studies going on at the moment, you know, the right dose, it's, seemingly can be helpful for many things take too much of it and it becomes toxic but i'll be fascinated to see how this longevity space unfolds over the next few decades it's certainly a really exciting area of medicine um if we go back a second then so the addiction side of it how on earth does that work i'm trying to get my head around it um yeah it's a good it's a good question isn't it you know and it is it is um it's one of those areas again I'm, I'm really not trying to be too vague with you ross it's one of those areas where we're still kind of working it out so we know that 
we know that NAD, like I said, it, it breaks down into into like its precursors, which help with with intracellular NAD. We know there's extra benefits from extracellular NAD, and whether that's kind of regulating those key enzymes related to kind of DNA repair, preventing DNA damage, releasing these kind of neurotransmitters like adenosine, but it seems to regulate other uh, neurotransmitters as well that that seem in some way to attenuate the cravings that we're getting. And I, my honest answer to you right now, Ross, is I can't give you a, a really scientific detailed explanation as to how it happens, but there seems to be a lot of at least kind of anecdotal evidence that it, it seems to work really well. And maybe that's something that I can I can get back to you on and give you a good summary on another time. But it does seem to that there's lots of people, lots of clinics that have done it. And it seems to for some reason seems to work really well for those for those areas. Brilliant. I think there's lots of things that instinctively we know work but we just haven't quite proven how it works yet you know acupuncture is a great example i'm a physio by background as you know acupuncture has been used for thousands of years there are still many people that say there's no scientific evidence for it working um and yet if it was just a fad it wouldn't last for three thousand years you know if it didn't work it wouldn't still be here um so maybe we just haven't looked quite in the right place yet and, and the same perhaps for this and um, when, when I met John uh, earlier in the year, he was talking about opening an addiction clinic in Spain. Is that open yet? I don't think it's open yet. So um, I think that that's definitely the plan is for them to do. Well, I don't think it's open yet, actually. I need to have a catch up with them. That's definitely their plan is to open up a, a clinic over there and, and you know, help people with with kind of addiction. Um, I think there's, there's talk of them opening up someplace in the UK as well. But I think it's sort of early days. Um, you know, the actual the actual company NAD Plus at home isn't a particularly sort of old company. You know, it's only been it's not been around for particularly long, so it is it is something that's kind of growing. Um, you know, John's obviously he, John's been around for a long time, obviously not in a nasty way, but you know, John's kind of he's he's been involved in NAD for for a huge amount of time for years and years. Obviously, over in the states, and he's got good links with people over there, and I, I mean that's where I guess it was kind of first being used for for addiction therapy. So. I think that that is definitely in their in their plan and, and kind of pipeline. I'm just I'm not sure if it's. I don't think it's open just yet, but I think in the near future the one in, in Spain will be open and running. Brilliant. Yeah, so definitely one for people to mm. to be aware of, and we'll put a link on there at, at the right yeah. time to, to to share that message. Um, with you mentioned about uh, oral medication as well, you know, like supplementation. I think I've, I've seen those. The um, is it liposomal? Yeah. So it's, it's held within, it's fat soluble. Yeah, so it's meant to. So I, I, I've done a little bit of work in the past with a company that, that sell liposomal supplements. Um, I say a little bit of work. We've met with them a few times. They're a great, a great group of guys. Um, they, they sell liposomal supplements, but in quite a, a small range of products. And the idea being that, I guess the, the kind of tagline is that you can get the benefits of the IV therapy in terms of absorption without having to have the kind of IV therapy, I guess. And that's because it gets absorbed it's absorbed in kind of the oral cavity and like that buckle kind of space just under the sort of tongue and the idea is that we're not having to rely on like the stomach and the the kind of small intestine to, to help absorb these supplements and it, it does it does seem to work well i think you know clinically we get a really good result with with nad i've had i've had patients with good results from the liposomal ones we get really good results from the nad plus at home injections there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking oral supplements you'll find like capsules tablets you'll find you'll find the precursors out there like the nmn the nr they, they all seem to you know have good effects of people helping boost nad i keep coming back to this as a clinician i've seen better results with with nad plus rather than the precursors but you know there's they're still very good products out there that, that work really well for people and like i said if you're someone who uh, the needles that we use to inject the the subcut are tiny, absolutely tiny. But if you're someone who says I can't handle that, then then definitely look at the oral supplements because they they do work, they work well, um, and I'm very confident you get a benefit from it. And I think the liposomal ones are very nice because we know that they're what we call bioavailability, their absorption is is great. And I think we know we're not we're not relying on yeah we're not relying on kind of absorption from the gut. And we know that people sometimes have gut issues, you know, say. Like inflammatory bowel disorders or, or Crohn's or, or some kind of even just you know some malabsorption problems or leaky gut for example that that can make things more difficult so it, it is a nice alternative for people who just don't who can't that can't really face the needles yeah absolutely it's interesting you mentioning leaky gut there because I'm sure 
95 percent of all doctors around the world there just to prevent doesn't exist yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what comes back. Um, I know, so I, I do some work in like the functional medicine space, and I've said this to some people before, and I don't know how you feel about this, Ross, but I think there's there's obviously there's lots of fantastic stuff that the NHS does fantastically well, right? You know, if you're, it's great that it's free at the point of care, handles emergencies fantastically. Um, it's not, it's obviously not so good for the individual because how can it be? You know, we're looking at sixty-eight or how many million people we've got in the country. It's not great for personalized care, but, you know, it's not expected to be. And that's where kind of like, the, you know, the more personalized medicine, the functional medicine comes in. And the point I was getting at, the slightly jokey point I was getting at is that there's also some really fantastic stuff in functional medicine. You know, you're looking at kind of like nutrition, you're looking at microbiome testing. You know, there's, there's some companies that offer really great kind of functional medicine testing. Um, and you'll go to these kind of conferences and events and you meet some fantastic, really interesting, tremendous people doing great work for people. Um, but when you step out of that kind of NHS sphere, and I think this is where this kind of world gets a little bit of a bad rep, because you step out of the NHS sphere, you, you meet kind of people who do more of the functional medicine, and actually you're not too far removed from people who do practice some slightly odd things. And I think that's where the kind of reputation gets a bit damaged. So my um, well, soon-to-be brother-in-law, he's he was in New Zealand at the time, and he and there is a theory that some people get gastroesophageal reflux, so so heartburn because their acid levels in the stomach maybe aren't so high. And that's where things like apple cider vinegar can help and other supplements can help. And he he came across a patient who was told literally to drink acid to, to improve their stomach acid levels. And no, like, no joke. So he came in and was like, well, it's all rubbish. And I spoke to him about it. And I was like, well, well obviously that's rubbish. Like, obviously, obviously I wouldn't tell people to do that. So you do, you do have to. And that's where I think, you know, like, that's where I think, in the NHS, the scepticism lies because you do get, unfortunately, people who do some really, really odd and actually can be quite dangerous things. But yeah, it's really important to be open minded because there's some really fantastic stuff out there, you know, like like the energy, like like the supplementation, like you know, the, the microbiome stuff. I mean, that's that's come on leaps and bounds, and that's that's so important for people. And you know, looking at helping with with absorption. I mean, like mold's another one. Like a lot of NHS doctors will be like, "Oh, mold, you know, absolutely doesn't exist." But then you get you hear like studies in, in you know not studies, but you hear cases in the news of of people who are severely unwell with mold, like children dying in like mold infested rooms, and it's just like well clearly this has an impact on people. So I think it's it's important to be open minded, but you know you do have to take take everything, every new treatment intervention on that kind of on on a kind of case by case basis, and and you know make sure that you look into it properly. But I think like you said about the the leaky gut, and like ninety five percent of doctors being like oh god it doesn't exist. I think you know there's there's that that closed mindedness a little bit sometimes can come from those extreme cases. I think it's really important as doctors that and people in general, obviously, that we do have that open mind that we that we keep learning and are receptive to these new treatments because there's some, there's some great stuff out there that makes a big difference to people's lives. Yeah, I love that. It's fantastic to to, to hear you speak like that as a doctor. Um, and to go back to what a point was always said before, in my head, you know, a, a medicine is is a type it's, it's science isn't it? a type of science and science is about learning so for someone to say no that's wrong yeah it, it kind of doesn't ring true for me you know we should be just saying well i can't see how that works now can we prove it you know yeah. what else can we do surely it's always about perpetually learning pushing us forward i guess as a species which is really what longevity medicine is all about so uh -huh. I, love your, I love the way you articulated it well, absolutely. You know, I mean, this is again. I like to keep things really simple. If we if we look, it wasn't that long ago that you know we thought the Earth was flat and that we thought the atom was the smallest thing ever. Do you know what I mean? And these things were proven to be wrong. And it's just there's lots of stuff that that kind of keeps evolving, keeps changing. And you know, I'm not saying that we have to you know dive into every new therapy and say, and see it's going to be fantastic and brilliant because there's going to be some that aren't. But if we just close minded, and I think that's one of the reasons why I end up doing more of this kind of work outside the NHS now is because we get the chance to kind of innovate and try new things. And we're not, obviously I use kind of nice guidance and so nice is national national Institute of clinical excellence. That's like the UK guidance for medical treatments. I use nice guidance. I'm up to date with nice guidance, but I'm not constrained by it. And that's the kind of point, isn't it? That we're not, we're not shackled to guidance as long as, as you very correctly summarized earlier, if we've got something that there's a really low risk of harm, and a great potential for benefit and we can try it why wouldn't we why wouldn't we just go for it you know i'm not saying we have to put people through 
you know, experimental dangerous things. But if we can look at something and say, actually, you know, the risk of harm is so tiny and you could get a really massive benefit from this. Why, you know, why wouldn't we try it? And I think that's the same for most people. Yeah, definitely. So, so what is the optimal protocol if there is such a thing for, for NAD? You know, is, is there like a recommended, you need X amount every six months or what, what does it look like? It's a really good question because and I'm, I promise you, I've, I've been, I haven't really, I've tried to give you as clear answer as I can. I'll do that on this occasion as well. Is that it, it really does vary person to person. So we've got, I guess in, in a, in a sort of broad sense, we, we say to people that testosterone drops roughly 1% a year from the age of 30. We're saying that NAD levels drop from the age of 40. Some people say it drops 50% every 20 years. It really varies person to person. If you're someone who hammers the lifestyle factors, if you're someone who's, you know, engages in all those really good health promotion behaviors, then you may not need to take the supplementation or you may need to take it. You may need to take a three month course once a year so we would say that we like, like most things we'd kind of evaluate it around the three month mark if we're taking it regularly so say nad plus at home we'd say maybe for the first four days or a week it's every day then it's every other day and see how you feel and we're kind of basing it a little bit subjectively on like people's energy levels their sleep quality cognitive reasoning all those things that we you know, aren't so easy to measure but we're hoping that we can see an improvement in with the IV therapy, those are those quite strong protocols, like those quite intense protocols for people who were severely depleted. And I, I still put people through loading doses who feel like they need that boost because they are so down. But then we might say to them once every four months, so three times a year, once every three months, once every six months. I would say if you're looking at that, it probably is once every six months is, is something that's useful for people to get a measurable benefit from. But Ideally, maybe a little bit, a little bit sooner than that. So close to three to four months. So quarterly is what seems to be, people seem to be getting on with. I work with, well, I sort of know slash work with affiliated with an American physician who's who's fantastic, and he he recommends a maintenance of once a month. And what he's very good at, and what I sort of chime along with really nicely, is that it also has to be flexible for people. So if we've got, so say an IV and AD drip, and let's just put a figure on it is 400 pounds right so that's that's a, a pretty standard rate depending on the dose you go you go for there'll be obviously people who are cheaper than that there'll be people who are a lot more expensive than that if i tell people you're going to spend 400 pounds a month on nad drip they might be like oh no thanks you know, like i just it's that's no good for me you know and it just puts people off and actually has to kind of be flexible with what they're feeling what they're experiencing their time commitments their financial commitments and i guess that's where the supplements like the subcut injections, the oral supplements, they can bridge that gap a little bit and make this a lot more accessible for people. So I guess as an ideal protocol, I'd say we'd start, you know, on on day zero, continue it for around three months, you know, every other day maybe. And let's see how you respond. If it's if you need a bit more, we can increase the dose. If you think that's a bit much, we can give it a three month period off or a month period off and then do it again and maybe do it every every two days or every three days. Um, so it, it does vary, but I'd say probably that that three month kind of range is is where we're looking at for for a course and seeing how people respond from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess like a lot of the longevity medicines, there's an argument that this is something that could be done if you want to live a, a long, healthy life, and you won't necessarily feel any benefits. You know, so I, I take metformin every day. Um, I can't feel that doing anything. But I believe from the research I've read and the people I've spoken to, that is having a benefit on my health span. Yeah. So I guess it, it, it could be similar. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, as, as you really correctly sort of summarized, it's like everything that is kind of good for you. You know, we, we don't necessarily feel the benefits, but if we don't know how we would feel if we weren't taking it. And I think that's that's really great that you're taking metformin. What, what kind of dose are you taking? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I take 500 twice a day. Yeah, so, so I don't mean to pry, Ross. I'm just curious. I'm just curious as to the dose regime that you're on. I mean, yeah. metformin's got a number of benefits. You know, it's it kind of all all kind of comes down for me. There's a lot of a lot of health, a lot of kind of conditions and and diseases, I guess, that we'd see in in modern medicine are metabolic in origin and related to insulin resistance. And that's something that I talk to a lot of people about. Um, 
and we know that metformin sensitizes your body to insulin and that's that's super important for for a number of reasons so that's that's really exciting and interesting that you're taking that um and I, a good good on you really i mean that's that's really great and hopefully we'll like you said hopefully you're seeing maybe not a perceptible difference right now but you know longer term maybe you'll be in a great condition for you know much longer than you would have been and i guess that's like exactly what you said that's that's kind of what we're hoping for with these supplements you know i take like i take a microbiome supplement you know i take a, a coq10 i might take an omega-3 you know the nad you know all of these things you know i don't take it and suddenly feel amazing but i got i've got to think that they're doing something good for me as well definitely i guess if you eat an apple you know it's good for you but you don't feel great do you straight, straight away you don't run around the room going oh it's amazing it's flying, like, <laughs> flying around the room no. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah whereas actually, conversely if you eat a load of rubbish you probably do feel like rubbish don't you yeah de definitely do um well mark i've absolutely loved the conversation it's really interesting learning more about nad plus how it works you know how it can be taken what ways we can get it into the body what the optimal protocols are if there are people watching this and they're thinking i, I want to reach out to mark i want to reach out to nad plus at home how do they do that so yeah, th thanks Ross. I think it's been great to speak to yourself as well. Um, obviously, we've, we've had a quick chat before and it's been great to kind of elaborate on this further. The, the best way is for people, there's there's the NAD Plus at Home website to have a look at. There's their Instagram account, which they're really active on. If you message them, they get back to you pretty much straight away. They're, they're really great. Um, if you wanted to talk to me, I've got like a social media account on Instagram. It's just Dr. Mark Jinx. Uh, I, I work out of a couple of places. The main one I'm based out of is, is the Henley Clinic, which is a Henley on Thames. That's where I'm based. Um, I've got a, a side business, business that looks a bit more kind of sporting performance. It's called Navitas Performance, but a lot of it operates out of the Henley Clinic. Um, and that's kind of us in a nutshell. But do if you are interested in NAD Plus at home, do take a look at their website. Get in touch with them on Instagram. If you have any questions, they'll often ask me and I'll, I can come back to you as well, either directly or through them. Um, and they're, they're just a great team, great people to know, and they're happy to answer any questions you may or may not have. Brilliant. Well, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Yeah, Take thanks, Ross. Same to you. All the best. Thank you for listening to the Alpha Genics Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss next week's episode. For more resources on Alpha Genics and men's health, visit alphagenics.co.uk. Until next time.